Good morning, friends. Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to the Creative Lab Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. I welcome you on behalf of the Ekal Group and the Clan Shali Group, along with the 2025 initiative. We started with a little delay because we have some technical problems. Uh, Uta has problems with your uh, internet connection, so she's trying to fix now. Um, so please let us create a bubble of light for Uta and for ask internet devas to assist us. And so there might be problems with sound, but hopefully not. Uta? Um, can you hear me, Alexander, everybody? Yes, we can hear you now. Can Let's... you hear me? Yes. yes. So, so let's try here. Is it okay now? Better? It, it was uh, no. breaking up a little bit just now, but let's continue and see how it goes. Okay. So that you know, the, the problem can uh, persist. Um, we, we convene monthly in to practice. I don't. Did you try to call in the, the number I have sent you? Uh, I see I have connecting Yeah, apologies, friends. Yeah, this technical 
issues uh, still can intervene in our work, but uh, Helen, would you be able to lead us in meditation? Uta said that you might lead us. Yes, I will do it with pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. And before we get into meditation, well, I would like to convey the introduction that Uta wrote for this session. That uh, in the Nations Lab, we convene monthly to practice becoming stewards for humanity. We learn together the skills which may be required for the personnel of a soul guided United Nations of the future. And in previous sessions, we have started to look at the field of relationships between nations. Last month, we have observed a very large field of relationships within humanity. The Alliance of Developing Nations called BRICS. This was really a big stretch for us into a fuller, more global perspective. Today, we want to consolidate, get used to, and exercise further this muscle of global awareness by tuning into the quality of each of the continents and their interplay to cultivate a more comprehensive comprehensive vision of the human family as a whole we will also start to explore an area of our group work which we have not so much focused on yet. The mental space of our council chamber, our building together in mental matter. Today, we will just bring into our awareness, just observing. Before we do this in meditation, we would like to set the tone with three passages by DK about mental work. The task of the mental workers, what it implies, and why it is important to do it in group formation. And this is from Cosmic Fire, page 954 and following. Well, the quotations here, the task of mental workers. The prominent workers and thinkers of the human family under the direction of the lodge are engaged in three things. A, the imposition of the newer and higher rhythm upon men. B, the dissipation of the murky clouds of half-vitalized indefinite thought forms which surround our planet, thus permitting the, en the entry of uh, interplay, interplanetary forces, and a force from the higher mental levels. And see the awakening within men of the power to think clearly, to energize their thought forms accurately, and to hold in vital form those thought constructions whereby they may attain their objectives and bring about desired conditions upon the physical plane. This was the task of the mental workers. Working with thoughts, 
These three objectives necessitate a clear comprehension among such vital thinkers and workers of the power of thought, of the direction of thought currents, of the science of thought building, of the manipulation under law and order of mental matter, and of the process of thought manifestation. In the continuation of the quote, thought work in group formation. It involves likewise the faculty of working in group form. Thought energy, which now emanates from each human being as a comparatively, comparatively weak stream of an indefinite conglomeration of mental matter of no particular character, forming no particularly distinct forms and persisting in animating those forms for but a brief period will be directed towards the creation of that desired by the group. Each thought being sent upon the definite mission of adding its quota of energy and matter to some one stream which is specific and known. This last is of importance for no worker for humanity becomes of real assistance until he consciously and with full knowledge of his work definitely directs his thought energy towards some particular channel of service to the race. So we need to learn to bundle our thought energy and direct it with intent and precision, with specificity. and to bring our individual thought field into resonance with the thought field of the group. Let's practice this in meditation. So we enter in meditation. in the Council Chamber of Elders in training. <clears throat> Withdraw the attention into inner stillness. Breathing deeply. Grounding in our body and in the earth. Standing in the love and freedom of our soul. Become aware of our thought life. Sense its vibration. Perceive the various thought currents happening in it at the moment. and allow our mental field now to become clear and focused.
in preparation for meeting in the council chamber. We now fine tune our vibration further. Expanding our awareness to a planetary perspective. Calibrating our hearts to the all-embracing will to love. We consecrate ourselves to serve humanity. Letting ourselves be drawn to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know well. Entering into the quiet and clear and spacious chamber. Taking our places in geometric order. Sense the atmosphere in the chamber. The geometrical harmony. Be aware of each other's presence in the circle. And be aware of the space we together hold. In the center of the chamber, Visualize the flame of our combined sustained will to love. We tune our hearts to it. And we hold together the space of intent, sustained love. Becoming aware now of the mental space of the council chamber. Gently, delicately, we allow our individual mental field to come into resonance with it. Observe how this synchronization is slowly happening. How is our mental vibration weaving into the mental space of the council chamber? Observe how each one of us is doing this subtle, gradual process. Okay. 
see our shared mental space slowly gelling into a calm, stable telepathic membrane. Observe the vibration of the mental matter in the council chamber. Can we discern thought forms, thought patterns, which have already been created in this chamber? Some perhaps quite crisp, others more fuzzy. Let us envision for a moment the experience, the act of creating together, of molding this raw material of mental matter. Building an accurate, specific thought form and holding it in vital form and direct it towards some particular objective. Let's take another moment of realizing our shared mental space. We notice the presence of high Deva beings assisting us in holding this space. As we do this, we are aware of our fellow world workers in all nations, forming with us the Ajna center of the planet. We invoke the presence of our ashramic co-workers, those who stand back of this nation's lab work.
and hold a moment of receptive silence for their input, for their guidance. Keeping our consciousness on the vibrational level of the council chamber, we lower a bit our assemblage point and let now the impressions settle. And perhaps note them down.
Yeah, and let us open the floor now for sharing our impressions and the awareness that each offering adds its quota of energy and matter to our shared space and specific service. And see if we can rather than sharing our whole experience, distill out, out of it, out of this experience, a gem to be added to the building of the council chamber. So we open the floor for sharing. Hello? Yes, we're trying now to connect with Uta via the phone. I don't know how it will work, but we can try. Yeah, we can try now. But it is a very special to be with you in this way. Um, I 
I'm fully with you from behind the curtain. <laughs> I'm not sure if Uta's words came through. Helen, could you hear what Uta said? Um, no, something of behind the curtains, but I did not really hear what she said. So Uta will have to stay telepathic today and yeah. communicate via our mental field. <laughs> But it's interesting that uh, we have this uh, issue today with when we work with this uh, topic of the mental feel of the group and thought forms, building thought forms. It's a uh, uh, certain hint for us there. <laughs> and I would say that through out uh, many years our work connecting regularly via go to webinar or zoom in a way was it's an experiment to work on that uh, in that mental space creating the mental space and uh, it's uh, valuable to start reflecting uh, on that how and what is happening do we are we capable to attune mentally and meet on that mental space and work creating thought forms um, in the meditation for the common good, it's our focus to, uh, by uh, bring the focus to uh, a chosen topic, to look together through different angles and uh, to recognize the the topic in in coolness that is uh, available to us at the moment and then to offer our sense of the most valuable seeds to contribute them into the building thought forms so today when uh, you uh, helen was leading us in meditation there was that sense of transparency and sense of really us being present together and uh, my understanding that the purpose of the meditation was exactly that to get that sense of that space of that um, capacity that we have uh we didn't go into actual thought forms building and because it's it's uh, it's uh, much uh more technical process and uh but our experience in the meditation for the common good uh, work is uh that's sometimes it's the sense that we uh can actually do that and the, the work that we do we actually create substance which is very uh, palpable and we can magnetize and radiate that thought form letting it in, uh, into the mental field of humanity sometimes the work is um, still very fuzzy and uh, it's an interesting process of uh, learning and uh, becoming aware of uh, our own mistakes and uh, our uh, own um, little successes when it's happening.
Thank you for leading us today, Helen. Well, you're very welcome. I'm sorry that uh, that on on the in this mental space there is um, uh, there is uh, vibrations that don't allow uh, uh, the words to pass through. Yeah, and this. Are there any um, any thoughts, any sharings about our moving into this uh, mental space? This mental space. Um, yes, uh, this is Kathy from Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, during that Hello. wonderful meditation. Uh, there was a point at which we were encouraged to recognize or sense uh, the, the thought field in the in the meditation chamber and in, in our gathering place. And I experienced a very brilliant kind of a blue um, uh, that. Uh, feel that was a little bit tangible, like almost gelatinous, but it was very, very clear blue. And when we were asked to um, discern whether we could discern former thought, uh, thought that may have been formed in that chamber, I saw within that really a very clear blue uh, like uh, golden um, lines that were fuzzy that could almost have been like uh, lines of, of script or writing of some kind. And they were, they were just um, layers of them. I'm, I'm gesturing with my hands, but, but, you know, like really distinct layers where the field was still very clear and blue around it. And uh, that when it when we were asked could we discern specific thought forms that was not um available to me it wasn't possible for me mm -hmm. uh so um it was a wonderful experience uh there was such a collect clear collective conscious steadiness of, and presence by the group holding this field and uh, which is which I've experienced before in our work uh, in this in this organ this uh, group's work uh, which I cherish so um, that's my report for now um, like Alexander said I I, I do uh, join the common good work and there has been some um, some good results I felt, you know, like tangible, uh, the f field of thought kind of modified to a coherent frequency um, at times with a specific focus and thought that has felt very strong and rewarding uh, to, uh, to disseminate, you know, into the collective consciousness. So, mm -hmm. I know that it can happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, so here's Annette from Germany, from the Klangschale. And I want to at first thank you, Helen, for jumping in and leading mm -hmm. us so, so well and so warm and through meditation. Yeah, I I'm impressed from this um, field of from from this mental substance, and I state with the importance of def definitely direct our thought energy towards a particular channel of service to humanity. 
And we here are doing this together in direction of a soul guided United Nation of the future, United Nations of the future. So yes, I think it feels like like really, really entering a little step, this new field, this very new strong field. And it's just the beginning. So thank you for this beginning together. Wow. Thank you, Annette. Tasha, uh, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Alexander. Um, Daisha here from Canada. Um, first a visual as we're entering the chamber, there was reference to geometric structure. And I saw us moving in a ritualistic pattern of the Merkaba. And then we took our space in broad circle so everyone could see everyone else the council's mental space felt open the sensation in my brain was zingy um, there was no content and when helen invoked the ashramic influence a wider space opened. It was um, infused with light, felt palpable, filled with love. And it was a sense of the limitless potential of intuitive space. And that was my impression, you, Helen, so much. <clears throat> well, mental, intuitive, and love. Thank you, Desha. Any other sharings before we continue? Sabina, please unmute yourself. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, this is Sabina from Klangschale, Germany. Um, a little add-on, and I also would like to thank you very much, Helen, to to create the the field and to bring us into this common meditation. And also thank you to Sasha, who who really. Um, illustrated a little bit what what is going on so my strong impression was that the whole chamber seemed to start to tune like a big 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 instrument which i don't know exactly and it was like like strings going um, horizontal and vertical so there was a 
the substance created, which is a quite new material. I never, never experienced. I have no idea what it was. So it was yeah. an act of being receptive and active in the same moment. And the, the picture of the instrument, which needs to be carefully, mostly carefully tuned by all of us, is that what remains? I felt a very, very strong presence of higher, um, higher flow in. It was like, like a waterfall. But the instrument was not yet quite ready, but it's in process. So <laughs> thank you to let me add this. Thank you, Sabina. Um, hello, this is Judy from uh, Massachusetts, USA. Uh, today, when we were held in that higher space and asked to go to the council chamber, the council chamber I realized was the council chamber of Shambhala. And we were at, I would say, a mental level that was higher than I've held by myself, certainly and even within group. And what really came across was that the higher will was at play. And we stood, I stood, we as a group stood fixed in that will. And what came to me was that we were standing at a level in terms of the council where we had to clearly agree on the rules of the road. And that came across in the common good, but it, it really came across here that to be able to hold this point of tension, because we were at the tension of will, we were really in the council chamber of Shambhala. It felt like the field was being uh, gathered and we were working at holding it, but we didn't yet have the capacity to be able to invoke. And what came across to me is that what we needed to invoke in terms of thought forms was not individually as nations, but we needed to begin to invoke our common goal when we stood at that highest level of will. And uh, I'm shaking because that energy was real for me and it did not, it did not precipitate thought forms per se, but it, it precipitated those impressions and knowing that if we bring ourselves to that higher mental state that we really needed a level of preparation that even when we look at the UN of the future, uh, it's not quite there yet for us to be able to uh, pull down from that higher level uh, because we're not working as a oneness yet. Hmm. So, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Oh. Okay. I think that we should uh, uh, continue our session and uh, if there are any uh, more sharings, Sasha, they can be uh, written, yes, into, uh, how do you do it, into the chat box or in, uh, how do you do it to put sharings in writing? Yes, there are um, the, uh... Uh, option of, of sending questions. Unfortunately, there is no chat function on uh, here. 
but I, I repost all the uh, question that's submitted. So I just reposted the question from Diana from Venezuela, uh, who mm. wrote, I also the geometrical uh, form we were creating in order and harmony, another way to be working in our group abstract mind. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so we uh, shall proceed. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. But I still uh, <laughs> is still not in communication. Okay. We can we can try Uta if you can tr try to speak. Maybe your internet got uh -huh. better. Uh huh. You want to try? Oops. Can you hear me now? Oh yes. No. Wow. Ah. Hey, great. <laughs> okay, is it stable? Can I can I take over? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, Alexander? Yes, so far it's good. Okay. Well, I'm very impressed with the work we are doing here. All the deep sharings. I think we're really honing honing onto um, onto the next level that we can do as a group and as an intergroup um, yeah so we will most probably continue with this work with the exploring more this function of uh, working in a mental space together and with mental matter. I agree with you, Judy, uh, very much that, um, yeah, there's a lot of practice to be done. And um, DK also says we, we should be, um, we should be very aware from where we, uh, engage the devas to give form to our thoughts. We better be sure to do this as a soul. So there's a lot to be still practiced before we safely engage as a group, as such a big group, powerful group in thought form missiles thought missiles okay so after this inner work this refinement of our council chamber let us now look outward into the world again Last month, we have been looking outside um, in, in a wider way than, than we had before, looking at all these brick states and how they are connected. It, it really stretched our awareness into, into a much wider, much more global uh, perspective than what we had engaged in in the, in the nation's lab before that um, yeah so so now let us just um, stay with this and and uh, uh, consolidate this this global awareness um, so we will have a, a meditation where we will look at our earth from from above so to speak um, and we will have again a look at the various continents as an exercise to help us 
get a, a sense of, of humanity as a whole, to look at the full spectrum. Um, and this will be um, a very general observation first. And it's just in order to train ourselves to, to, to use this muscle of becoming aware of other parts of the world that we may be less familiar with. So let us reconvene in our council chamber. Being aware that this council chamber is situated midway between humanity and hierarchy. Stepping again into this function. And together now, let us look upon our planet. Taking a moment to just hold her in our loving awareness. the earth as a living being. Let us now become aware of the continents, Europe, Asia, Oceania, Africa, America, and visualize humanity being spread out over these continents, ordered into nations. Now let us tune into each continent, one after the other, and sensing the distinct quality, the distinct note of that continent. And let us start with North America, listening to its note as it sounds through its people. Peoples and become aware of the present dynamics going on. What are the forces working themselves out within its aura? We take a moment for this North America. Okay. Now let us move our gaze to South America. Different note, different process. We 
what's the development going on in South America. Okay, let us move our attention to Europe now. Where is Europe at? What processes are underway in Europe? Okay, now let us move to Asia. Very large continent. What is happening in Asia? Let us get a sense of the very varied forces at play. Just a subjective sense. And let us 
focus now our awareness on Oceania. What's the present dynamic in Oceania? Okay, and we move our gaze to Africa. What is going on in Africa at the moment? What is Africa working on? Which forces are working themselves out? Okay. Let us now bring them into relation in our awareness. Sense the different resonances, intentions between them. Just a subjective sense. Thinking back for a moment into the council chamber. And from this elevated place, look at the aura of humanity as a whole. See if we can see it as hierarchy sees it in its present process. Let's take another few moments for this large subjective overview.
holding our humanity in our heart. Let us now release the observation, resting for another moment together in the council chamber. And gently, let us return to our individual grounding. Taking a little pause to settle back and perhaps note down any impressions. Okay, so let us open the floor again. I'm aware that we don't have so much time left. Perhaps it would be, we have, I believe, um, participants from all continents. Perhaps we could try to give voice to each one. To hear a voice from each continent. Uh, hello, this is Jill from Britain. I just felt that developed nations are betraying the lesser developed nations 
by relaxing climate change measures and not giving enough assistance to the uh, poorer nations, even though they have the wealth that uh, they could use to do so. Thank you. Are you unmuted? Would you like to share something? I can share my impressions. Uh, at the moment, I'm on the continent of Australia. And, uh, for me, it was very distinct recognition when uh, uh, I write here of a different note of uh, that presence. And so when we were meditating now, a sense in the communities of a different continents, for me it was uh, in, in a way two distinct notes coming in parallel. The note of the continent itself and the energy uh, and the, probably you can say like this devic presence, but it's difficult for me to define it. Devil of the continent, and another note of the of the people who live on the continent, uh, of the nations, and it was uh, very interesting to observe that the we all shared the same problems, the same struggles and that was the distinct note of all the continents of all people on all the continents it's shared struggle but each continent people on each continent had their own specifics so to speak which more highlighted and again those are shared among all of them not a specific for each continent but uh, I don't want to go now into like <laughs> the details of those impressions of, of coming from each one, but uh, it was very interesting to uh, sense and recognize that. And I just can say for the um, people of Australia how I uh, recognize it as very limited uh, understanding, but it's on the, on the level of sense. It's the struggle of uh, reconciliation and healing uh, between the First Nation people and the settlers, or uh, some people call them like uh, occupation that came here and the conflict that it created and it still persists. And now it's getting activated in the people's. Uh, psychic uh, coming to the surface of recognition and trying to heal that uh, wound. Thank you.
Uh, hello, this is Judy again. Um, for me, what stood out was that the world stage in some ways is being rewritten. That groupings actually, and this, and we did groupings as in continents, um, work better as a group than individual nations. And all of a sudden, the idea of the seven continents and the seven rays stood out as each being very unique in its note, uh, each having particular gifts, each having uh, a different need. And so it was the idea of celebrating these groupings together before we moved to a feeling of synthesis. Is anyone from the African group still here? I saw Jonathan before. It would be nice to get an African, a voice from Africa. I don't see Jonathan on the list now. No. Okay. Yeah, we have a few more minutes left. Anyone else would like to share? Yeah, I think it's it's for me it's very timely to to do this stretch to open my awareness to all these different nodes of these continents. I uh, I have decided to to ask for a, a, a globus, how you say, a, a sphere of, of, of the earth for, for my house here, that I can get more of a sense of the globe viscerally. Okay, Alexander, do you have any announcements before we do a little closure meditation? Well, we are about to enter the full moon and um, just want to invite to join us on September 27th for the Libra gathering in the garden and on October 1st, meditation for the common good. And uh, it's always a daily meditative vigil at 8 p.m. GMT. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And our next lab session, Nations Lab session, will be on October 31st. So. Lots of blessings around the world. Let us hold our world in our heart and uh, let's hold for another moment our shared flame of the will to love.
and let it flow through each of us into our own nation. And onwards, see it flowing together through all of us into the entire field of the family of nations. Affirming the will to right relations between all nations. Let us return to our own personal field, our own location on this planet, being like a pillar, letting our light shine and grounding it as a blessing into the earth. Thank you, friends. Bye-bye.